Hey NBA fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Chat Sports, and today we have a very special NBA video for you guys. The top seven most likely landing spots for DeMarcus Cousins. Again, you watch a lot of my videos here on Chat Sports. I've mentioned DeMarcus Cousins a lot, and I've said many times he's a hard one to figure out and try and speculate where he's gonna go. So I have a list, one through seven, going down to see where I think potentially are some landing spots for Boogie Cousins. Now again, up on the screen right now, you'll see, of course, Boogie Cousins is an unrestricted free agent this weekend. The Warriors can only offer him 120% of his last year's contracts. That's about $6.4 million. So the big question is, will someone give Boogie more than $6.4 million and offer him a long-term multi-year deal? I don't know. Let's go ahead and find out. Stats from the last four years, Boogie Cousins, quickly look at these numbers. We always think that he may be going downhill after the injuries. Listen, it's an elite player when he's healthy. This year, 16.3 points, and then in the upper to mid-20s the last three years. You see the numbers in front of you. He can be a dominant big man when healthy. The question, of course, last two uh, you know, lower leg injuries, is he still going to be the same player? I'll actually ask that question for you guys here before we jump into this. Is Boogie still a top five center in the NBA? Type Y down below for no or y, y down below for yes, and N down below for no. First question off the board, I'm very curious what you guys think in terms of how good Boogie Cousins is going into this year's free agency. Number seven, we of course, excuse me, we have your course, yes, start number seven with the Milwaukee Bucks, and the Bucks are interesting. A couple weeks back, I did, a, I did a, a, number, a, a top 15 or top 10 NBA free agencies list, and I actually predicted Cousins going to the Bucks. Well, things are starting to change here, again, Eric Bledsoe, Chris Middleton both have player options, but they are going to most likely re-sign Middleton, and they already gave Bledsoe his money. And so now you sit there and it's like, hmm, uh, they still have Brooke Lopez, and they still have Malcolm Brogdon as unrestricted free agents, but the word on the street is, is that they're preparing to at least offer Brooke Lopez a new contract. So where would Boogie fit? I think if they are unable to re-sign Lopez and Brogdon, then maybe they could get Boogie, maybe offer him the mid-level exception. And again, you can see the starting lineup, what a starting five would look like with Boogie on that squad. Bledsoe, probably George Hill, then Chris Middleton, Giannis, and Boogie himself. But this is why they're number seven, because to me, the money doesn't make a lot of sense. I think it makes more sense for the Bucks to go ahead and re-sign Brooke Lopez, keep Malcolm Brogdon, figure it out money-wise, and maybe, you know, not look at Boogie Cousins. Again, stuff's fluid, right? It's been changing day by day, week by week. So as of today, we'll put the Bucks at number seven. Moving on, we actually had the Los Angeles Lakers at number six. Many people think this is a match made in heaven because, of course, Davis and Boogie Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins did play together in New Orleans. Here's the deal. The Lakers strike out on big names. Kyrie, Kemba, um, D'Angelo Russell, because they're trying to add, make the money to clear up the cap space and add a, a, a third star to the Lakers. I don't see them offering Boogie Cousins any money. But if they miss out, right, they don't get a point guard, they just start getting cheap shooters, then maybe you throw to Marcus Cousins like $10 million and he will come on and sign. Again, potential starting lineup for the Lakers right now with Boogie is there's a lot of question marks here, right? Who's the point guard? Because Rondo's on the one-year deal. Who's the shooting guard? Maybe they bring back Contavious Paul Caldwell-Pope and then Braun, AD, and Boogie together. I don't know. This one, again, six, it just doesn't make a lot of sense because I know they played together in the past, but how would Braun... The Brow and Boogie all work out together. That's a lot of big guys down low because LeBron likes to attack the paint and obviously the height and size of AD and DeMarcus Cousins. Again, they miss out. You never know. And he'd probably take a little bit less to go play with LeBron James. But at the same time, that's why they're number six. Don't really see that one happening. Moving right along here. Number five, the Boston Celtics. This one's starting to gain a little bit of steam here because, of course, last year, Marcus Cousins was down between the Warriors and the Celtics. He almost signed with the Boston Celtics last year. And, of course, we know Al Horford wants out, and Kyrie Irving is definitely not coming back. So they'll have the money, and maybe, especially if Horford leaves, they might need a big man down below. Maybe Boogie Cousins is a good pair up there with the likes of Jason Tatum and Gordon Hayward. Again, you look at the starting lineup, the projected starting lineup for the Celtics. Uh, I guess Terry Rozier, if, they re, if, he, if he wants to stay when Kyrie leaves. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Marcus Morris, if he wants to resign, again, question mark, and then Boogie Cousins as well. Of course, you know, if they went ahead and got Kemba Walker, like a lot of the reports are saying here, then throw Kemba into the starting five as well. I don't know. Hasn't started yet, but there you go. That's what a uh, Boston Celtics team would look like with Boogie Cousins on there. This one, again, five all the way down to one. 
makes a lot more sense and to me are a lot more likely than the number six and seven teams on this list. But again, guys, anything can change, which means we got to move right along here to number four in the San Antonio Spurs. Listen, the Spurs love good passing big men, right? Look in their past. They signed, they, they, they uh, acquired Paul Gasol. They had Tim Duncan before, of course, the Marcus Aldridge, all big men who can pass and technically shoot pretty well because Gasol and LaMarcus Aldridge were pretty decent shooters beyond 10 feet. And so maybe adding another big man like that would make a lot of sense for the San Antonio Spurs. Here's my question. Would DeMarcus Cousins and Greg Popovich work together, right? Seems like two very different, you know, personalities going at each other, but at the same time, maybe Pop and Boogie could become BFFs and he would listen to Pop because he's one of the best coaches in the NBA. I don't know. But this one would be very interesting to me in terms of the San Antonio Spurs trying to upgrade that roster after, of course, losing Pablo Pau Gasol, no longer on at the roster. And they can offer him the mid-level exception, which is like $9.2, $9.3 million. So the Spurs at number four here, to me, makes a lot of sense for DeMarcus Cousins. Again, potential starting lineup, De uh, DeJounte Murray coming back from the injury, Derek White, DeMar DeRozan, uh, Forbes, Aldridge, and then, of course, excuse me, uh, not Forbes, Aldridge at the four, and then Boogie Cousins at the five. Question for you guys here. Boogie and Pop. Insert the popcorn emoji down below if you guys would love to see how that would go. Because again, it's like we said, either it's a match made in heaven and Boogie falls right in line and it works really well, or it's like Kawhi Leonard versus Pop times 50 because Boogie's a lot more confrontational than Kawhi Leonard is. All right, top three here. Here we go. Now it gets interesting, right? LA Clippers are at number three. When it's all said and done, they're going to have about $50 million in cap space if they work the cap and move the players like they're expected to. I have predicted they're going to miss out on a lot of big-name free agents. Kawhi staying in Toronto. Uh, if if Clay goes anywhere, it would probably not. I mean, I guess Clay, if he went somewhere, would be the Clippers, but odds are he's going to re-sign with the Warriors. KD is going to go to the Eastern Conference. Kyrie doesn't make a lot of sense either. He's going to go wherever KD goes. They're just going to miss out. Right? It's just like how I talk about the Nets are going to miss out in free agency on the big name guys. The Clippers are as well. And so, you know, when you got that much cap space, maybe you get a D'Angelo Russell and then you bring in a guy like Boogie Cousins. And again, like, like we keep saying, they could offer him a lot of money. So they could have potentially offer him the best contract because Boogie took so little money last year with the Warriors. That could make a lot of sense from his standpoint of going, hey, listen, I just want to get paid. I just want my money. I'll work with Doc Rivers, the head coach there, and then, of course, see what we can add in free agency. But this one, to me, makes a lot of sense. Again, here is kind of a potential lineup here in uh, on the, the Clippers. Again, the shooting guard are completely blank. We don't really know who that is essentially going to be because no more Patrick Beverly, most likely. Still have Landry Shamit, still have Gallinari, and then add, you, you add Boogie Cousins onto that list as well. Again, all these starting five stuff, a lot of teams we picked here, the starting five we show you might not be the same by the time you watch this video because things might be changing, things are fluid. So it's what I have for you as of when this video is filmed today, but it can always, always change. That's why you see question marks. That's why it's like, okay, we're not really sure exactly who is going to be here. All right, we're moving right along. Number two, the Golden State Warriors. I know what I said in the very, very beginning, right? They can only offer him 120% of what he made last year with the Warriors, which of course is only about $6.4 million on a one-year deal. Doesn't make any sense because he doesn't, you know, he wants to make money, right? Here's the deal. Other teams are going to be able to offer this mid-level exception of $9.3, $9.2 million. But a one-year prove-it deal for Boogie Cousins to me makes a lot of sense. Now it doesn't sound fun, doesn't sound sexy, right? You want to get a big name contract, you want to move on. But coming back to the Warriors, who are getting a new arena in, uh, in, San, in San Francisco, and will keep Steph Curry, and no Klay Thompson, no Kevin Durant this year because of injuries, and so obviously Boogie gets a bigger role, and you know Kevon Looney might leave as well, I, it would make a lot of sense for me to re-sign at $6.4 million, and then try and have a prove-it year, and then next year you hit free agency for real, and someone will offer you a lot more money. Again, He's going to be on a winning team. They're going to make the playoffs next year, even without KD and, uh, and, 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 and Clay Thompson. I would be all for this being if I was in the Boogie Cousins camp. Again, the starting five here, kind of a projected lineup. Steph Curry, you know, who's going to be the shooting guard in Clay's spot? Not really sure. And then you have Iguodala, Draymond Green, and Boogie Cousins. That shooting guard could be Quinn Cook because they hold his player rights, but he might want to go where Kevin Durant goes as a report that we're hearing. So again, not really sure who's going to be in that position, but that's how it works here on the Boogie Cousins uh, projection video we're throwing on right now for you guys on Chat Sports. Question for the Warrior fans out there, and I guess if you're not a Warriors fan as well, 
Is the Warriors dynasty over? Type by down below if you agree, like, yeah, it's over. Or dubs down below if you believe that, no, 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 listen, Dub Nation's still here. We're going to be just fine. The Warriors are still the team to beat in the West. I'm curious this one. Scroll down. Let me know in the comments down below. And finally, number, number one, my prediction, the one that's been gaining steam like a snowball down the hill every single day, the New York Knicks. The New York Knicks have, Bo have Boogie on their radar right now, according to multiple sources. If they don't get any of the big name free agents, like they don't get Ky Kyrie Irving or they don't get Kevin Durant or whoever they're else they're looking at, they are apparently looking at Boogie Cousins to be an option. For this, again, a one-year prove-it deal still makes sense, but hey, Knicks are going to have money. They could do the same thing the Clippers might do, just throw them more than anybody else to have him come and sign that way they at least get one big name free agent going forward here in 2019. I've said many times I think Kevin Durant is going there. I think even with Kevin Durant, maybe you still bring Boogie Cousins as well. Either way, the Knicks to me make a lot of sense. And if you're reading in the newspapers and reading Twitter right now, the Knicks are apparently very, very interested in Boogie Cousins as well. And again, the lineup here could be very, very different after we actually get there. I mean, really the only players on this list we know are gonna be there, and we know are gonna be at least starters depending on who they go and sign, is RJ Barrett and then Boogie Cousins. You sit there and it's like, yeah, I mean, who plays Kevin Knox's position? It's, it's, it's crazy because, again, you see the starting five on your screen right now, but that could very well change by the time that Boogie Cousins is signed because the Knicks could be wheeling and dealing and signing and getting this guy or getting rid of it. It's, it's crazy. So we'll have to sit down and wait and see. So there you go. We'll do a quick little recap here. Number seven, of course, the Milwaukee Bucks. Number six, the Los Angeles Lakers. Five was Boston. Four was the San Antonio Spurs. Three was, of course, the LA Clippers. And then two was re-signing with Golden State, taking less money, the least amount of money anyone could potentially pay him, but going back to do the San Francisco Bay Area. And then number one, the one that makes a lot of sense, is the Golden, or sorry, is the New York Knicks. Final question for you guys, always type down below, who do you think will sign Boogie Cousins? Where do you think he'll go? After hearing this video, did I change your mind? Type down below, I'm curious your guys' thoughts as always. And again, be sure to subscribe to Chat Sports for all the latest NBA news, videos, and rumors. Because again, it's heating up, right? Free agency is just around the corner. This is going to get crazy. And I'm sure we'll have a lot of great content here up on the channel. There you go. That's the seven places I think are the best fit and potential landing spots for DeMarcus Cousins. For Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Mott signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.